I got an email from a viewer recently that asked me the question, now that you've had the ICOM IC7610 for a bit, how do you think it compares to the IC7300? Looking at it from the basis of a radio and not just at the extra functions like the 7610 has, like the dual VFO. And I thought this question was worthy of a video. So I've had my 7610 for a little over five months, almost six, and I can tell you that the difference is night and day. Now the ICOM IC7300 is a great radio. I'd recommend it for every new ham who just wants to get into HF. It's just that good. In fact, ICOM recently said that they've sold over 100,000 7300 units, which is absolutely insane. And if you've ever owned one, let me know in the comments below what you think of it or thought of it if you've had one in the past. But I have to admit, I've kind of forgotten about my 7300. Shh, now, now, there, there. I haven't really forgotten about you. It was all a lie. Well, I haven't quite forgotten about it, but it's been sitting all by its lonesome over on my other bench, waiting for some park activations to get it fired up. The IC7300's basically been relegated to my portable, mainly my, my POTA radio. And now when I switch it on and use it, it seems well, a bit basic compared to the 7610. The first thing is the screen on the 7610. It's massive, like it's huge difference when you're operating. It's so much more larger and it's easier to see. Plus, in my opinion, it's a little bit better laid out. You get a variety of options with the S meter. You get an old school analog style meter or a modern bar graph meter. And when you're looking at the analog meter, you still get the best of both worlds with both the analog and the digital bar graph down the bottom. The only drawback though is that you can't get the analog style meter when you have the scope on the um, spectrum scope. There's just not enough real estate on the screen. And I don't know about you, but there's just something about having all of the information at my disposal. Now, this is one thing that both the 7610 and the 7300 do. It shows you everything, ALC, SWR, compression, power output, current draw, which is fantastic when you're on the air to see if something just isn't quite right while you're transmitting. I don't know if it's just me, but the receivers just seems much better in my 7610 compared to my 7300. This might be a completely biased statement since the radio is like three times the price, but I just feel like it's much easier to listen to and just hear stations down in the noise using the 7610. Um, I have no technical proof to back this up. I guess what I don't know won't hurt me, but it just seems like it's much better. And I also like buttons and knobs. I mean, who doesn't, right? The 7610 has a lot more buttons and knobs on it, even just band switching buttons. So you can do a lot more from the front panel without having to dive deep into the menus or to use the touchscreen to change something just like a band, for instance. Another little known feature is also the ability to switch off the microphone input DC bias. This might not seem like much, but it opens up much more opportunities to use a different microphone without needing a blocking capacitor in your microphone line. So what this does is it stops the eight volt DC from being passed through to a dynamic element microphone. Uh, the only gotcha with this though is if you switch back to the hand microphone or use an electric microphone, such as a Heil headset, uh, you need to turn it back on. But it's no real biggie. It's just something that was thought about when they designed the 7610. With the 7300, you don't get that option. It just means that you have to buy the correct cable with the DC blocking cap for the job. Now, I did a video on how I connect my microphone here, the Shure MV7, to my ICOM radio, and you can see how I did that at the end of this video. I've obviously also been using the 7610 pretty heavily with YouTube. I can use the DVI output to display my screen easily when uh, in my software so that when you can watch along and you can see exactly what I'm seeing and hearing when streaming. The 7300 has no video output, so I had to set up a camera in front of the radio, which was fiddly and time consuming and it just didn't quite look right and I couldn't get it looking good. Um, of course, this doesn't affect everyone, but the ability to connect your radio's display to an even bigger one is a plus, which you can do with the 7610. It just makes your ham shack look a little bit more, a little bit more pro looking. Now, the 7610 is quite a bit larger than the 7300, so it does take up more space. But for me, it feels right at home in my shack. Um, there's just so many other functions that I haven't even explored. And if there is something that I must explore and must know, then please let me know in the comments. I've received a few that have said that I need to update the firmware in my radio to version 1.41 to make use of the digital 
pre-distortion function. And I, mu I must admit, I haven't had the time to explore that on my radio and the benefits that it's gonna mean to me. So you might wanna let me know what those are, but the same um, too with the IQ data output to drive HDSDR. I, I haven't even set that up yet or the network for remote control. So I know, um, pretty slack, right? I also want to explore the diversity reception using the two receivers in the 7610. And I know that it's not a real fair comparison to the 7300 as it doesn't have two receivers or three antenna jacks like the 7610 does, but it can be a massive advantage to someone operating in a high noise environment. So you can have one side of your radio on your main transmit antenna and the other side on a low noise receive antenna, which can really help you to pull out those uh, signals from the noise. The 7300 obviously is much better for portable. Both radios run 100 watts, but there's no way that I'd take my 7610 portable over my 7300 unless I was operating a contest away somewhere, but uh, certainly not outdoors. The one frustrating thing with the 7610 is the repeater functionality. It basically doesn't exist at all. There's no simple repeater button. I wanted to be able to monitor my 10 meter repeater or my six meter repeater from one side of the radio whilst the other side was on FT8 or HF. Now, I can do that, but if I want to transmit back, I can't do it without first changing the active side of the radio. I need to change that. I need to hold down the split button so the input on the other side moves over to the other side and then making sure the receiver and the audio is turned down on the repeater input side. Then you have to make sure that any CTCSS tones are programmed in and it's all a bit messy. I haven't really found a way to put this into a memory channel for easy recall on one side of the radio. Perhaps someone can tell me um, how to do that. And I, I do have to caveat this though, the 7300 doesn't have a repeater button either. You have to run it either in, you have to run it in split mode, but you can program it as a memory channel and it's all recalled. Even if it's in slip, split mode, it's a lot easier than the 7610. It's, it's, it's still frustrating and I'm sure it could be fixed with a firmware update. So uh, ICOM, if you're listening, that would be great if you could fix the repeater functionality on those two radios. I'm having a hard time letting go of my 7300. It's just been too good to me. I thought that it was the radio to have in the shack, but the 7610, it's kind of changed my mind. And to be honest, you know, there's there's so many more expensive radios, even cheaper radios that rival the 7610's performance. But at the end of the day, if you've done your research and you're happy with your purchase and it fits what your requirements are, then basically that's all you really need. Would I recommend a 7300? Yes. Would I recommend a 7610? Yes. So. Three times the price though, what extra features do you get? Is it a worthwhile upgrade? Find out over here if it is.